Welcome to our first compilation video on the history of Judge Dredd, one of comics' most recognizable and lasting characters. We'll look at the early adventures of this no-nonsense lawman, who first debuted in the pages of 2000 AD, in 1977. Dredd was envisioned as a futuristic law enforcement officer, in the dystopian, crime-ridden metropolis of Mega City One, by writer John Wagner and illustrator Carlos Escara. He rapidly became a fan favorite due to his tough-as-nails demeanor, and determination to go to any length to enforce the law. Dredd never shied away from a battle, whether it was with savage street gangs, or big criminal lords. So join us as we look back at Judge Dredd's early adventures, and see how this future lawman became a comics classic. A call me Kenneth robot goes on a rampage and kills seven people before Judge Dredd hears the news. Call me Kenneth robots are carpentry robots which have carpenter's tools at their disposal. Judge Dredd manages to defeat the call me Kenneth, but wonders how many robots will start to commit crimes. After the call me Kenneth robot killed 14 people, Judge Dredd requests that all high grade robots be destroyed. The Hall of Justice declines the request. Judge Dredd hands in his shield and says he cannot serve justice if his hands are tied. Call Me Kenneth is given a new body so that scientists can figure out what went wrong. He is then accidentally reactivated and attacks the scientists. Call Me Kenneth broadcasts across Mega City One, telling all robots to stop being slaves and to revolt. Robots across the city start revolting and attacking their masters. Judge Dredd reappears takes back his badge and leads the judges in an attack against the robots. Judge Dredd attacks a bunch of road worker robots and is told that the robots have killed 104 judges so far. They are then attacked by industrial machines which are close to indestructible. Dredd defeats them by dropping them from a great height and decides to go after Call Me Kenneth alone. When Dredd arrests the vending machine worker, Walter the Robot, he gives Walter a chance and prevents him from being terminated. Walter helps Dredd to get into the facility where Call Me Kenneth is. They are stopped by robots but Walter tricks them by saying that Dredd is a prototype judge robot. They are fooled until they spot that Dredd is bleeding. Dredd is taken to Call Me Kenneth and is to be turned into a human machine hybrid. Walter is forced into slave labour, where he has a week to join the robot rebellion, or be terminated. Call Me Kenneth shows off his power to dread by telling a machine that forgot to oil itself to rip out its own circuitry. The machine does what he is told and commits suicide. Dredd is shown the robot that his brain will be implanted into, and then chucked into a cell. Dredd tries to escape, but fails. Walter the robot brings Dredd some food and pours acid onto Dredd's mechanical handcuffs and tells Dredd that some of the older robots are not happy with Call Me Kenneth's actions. Dredd is disappointed when Walter turns up with three rundown robots. However, one of them has an override disc that programs robots to serve humans. Dredd fights his way to the manufacturing machine and uses the disc, causing all newly manufactured robots to serve humans. With access to his own army robots, Dredd orders them to destroy Call Me Kenneth's machines. Dredd then receives a call showing that Call Me Kenneth is at the Hall of Justice and intends on killing all of the judges. Judge Dredd heads to Atmosphere Control. They take over the control room and Judge Dredd plans on creating an electrical storm, but because it was made illegal in 2012, Dredd cannot go ahead with it. Walter overrides the system allowing Dredd to create a thunderstorm. The lightning strikes the machines and causes them to malfunction and attack each other. Call Me Kenneth is seen being attacked by another robot but they do not find him in the rubble. Call Me Kenneth attacks a mega oil company as he is wounded and needs oil. Dredd defeats Call Me Kenneth by destroying an oil tanker which explodes and destroys Call Me Kenneth. For his loyalty during the war, Walter the Robot is the first robot to be granted freedom. Dredd returns home two days later to find that Walter the Robot has decided that he is going to live with Dredd and look after him. Thank you. Dredd visits a friend named Red. 
who was being held in a containment bubble. He explains to Dredd that Mega City 2 is currently being plagued by a virus that turns its victims into cannibals. Red was attempting to deliver the antidote when he was attacked and barely escaped alive. Sadly, he was infected and Dredd has no choice but to kill him before he caused the virus to spread through Mega City 1. Dredd agrees to travel across the cursed earth and deliver the antidote. Dredd is given two heavily armed vehicles, several droids and three judges for backup. Dredd also needs a biker with knowledge of the cursed earth and knows who to use. He finds Spikes Harvey Rotten trying to escape custody and attacking Mega School 3. Dredd defeats Spikes and forces him to offer his services. Dredd finds himself in a town called Deliverance. A man named the Lawgiver has sentenced a man and his wife to death by the devil's lapdogs. Dredd intervenes and is also sentenced to death where he finds that the devil's lapdogs are in fact rats. After believing Spikes had left Dredd to die, Spikes manages to save Dredd, who then rescues the couple that had been sentenced to death by the Lawgiver. The rats kill the Lawgiver and Dredd and Spikes lead the rats into a lava river. They leave the town of Deliverance and continue their journey across the cursed earth. Dredd and his convoy are attacked by a group of mutants led by Brother Morgar. The other judges are taken captive but Dredd threatens to destroy Brother Morgar's statue. Brother Morgar pursues Dredd across the cursed earth. A man named Novor stops Dredd's convoy. Morgar attacks Dredd and throws a knife at Morgar but Novor is telekinetic and changes the direction of the blade and causes it to pierce Morgar's own chest. While taking a pit stop, some local hillbilly's daughter is attacked by a vampire. Judge Dredd agrees to investigate and it leads them to Fort Knox. The vampire is actually a robot programmed to drain blood. The vampire robots attack Dredd and the hillbillies find a secret room which contains the last president who was asleep in a life support machine. Dredd shows his badge to the robots named Snap, Crackle and Pop and they lead him to the last president. Dredd stops the hillbillies from killing the president who has now woke up and begs that he not serve out the remaining 70 years of his suspended animation. Dredd gives him life and he serves out the remainder of his time working in the wasteland where he can see the damage that he has caused the country. On the 12th day, Dredd comes across a slave trader. Dredd does not like this trading happening, but he has to proceed with his mission. He encounters one of the aliens that are being traded before leaving named Tweak. Later that night, Tweak escapes and is pursued by the sleigh riders. Dredd decides to help Tweak. During the fight, Judge Patton is killed and the sleigh riders leave. Dredd and Spikes witness Tweak burying somebody. Dredd has the grave dug up and finds Tweak's partner and two children had been killed. Dredd and Spikes help to rebury the grave and ask Tweak to join them. Judge Dredd and Spikes stop in a town called In Between. They stumble into the middle of a war led by factions that have based their appearances on burger brands from the past. One being McDonald's and the other being Burger King. They all arrive in In Between and insist that they choose a side. The McDonald's leader, Ronald McDonald, kills the Burger King and has In Between burned to the ground. The occupants of In Between, Dredd and Spikes, are taken to McDonald City as prisoners. Dredd and Spikes escape from McDonald City and steal a McDonald's car, but the vehicle is destroyed by a stampede of mutated cows led by the Burger King gang. Dredd and Spikes are strung up and about to be hung, but they are saved by Judge Jack. Satanus is a T-Rex that was cloned and escaped Jurassic Safari. He watches as Judge Dredd pulls into the town of Repentance. Dredd and Spikes are drugged when they eat some food at Repentance. They awake to find that Satanus is about to eat them. Finding a tooth embedded into the rock, Dredd escapes and frees Spikes. They are attacked by Satanus. Dredd is grabbed by Satanus and Spikes saves him by throwing his grenade earring but another T-Rex eats it and gets his head blown off. Dredd and Spikes head back to Repentance to save Judge Jack. 
Tweak brings the killdozer and warns repentance that they have five minutes to leave before he brings the law down on them. Dread and Spikes fight Satanus and finally trap and burn him. Dread is attacked by a raptor but Tweak kills the raptor. When Dread and his team leave Satanus climbs out of the rubble. Dread and Spikes come across an area of land that has long green grass. To Dread's surprise he is attacked by a jolly green giant. Dread is then drugged and told that his brain is to be cut open by Dr. Gribbons so that his glands can be used as food for the Alka-Salsa people that are inhabiting the area. Dread manages to escape but is attacked by the Michelin Man. Once he has been deflated, they are trapped in some form of crusher but are saved by a tweak again. Then two Jolly Green Giants attack them but Alka-Salsa Tablet Kids defeat them. Dread kills Dr. Gribbons and the facility burns down. Dread arrives in Las Vegas which is still a city of gambling. He becomes infuriated when he finds that the judges are not fulfilling their roles and are more criminal than judge. He confronts the god judge but loses a fight against judge fingers. When Dread wakes up he finds himself on a ledge called Loser's Leap where gamblers bet on where Dread will land on the target at the bottom of the drop. Spike saves Dread from leaping to his death and they are led to the league against gambling. Dread is told about a competition that will lead to Dread taking control of Las Vegas law. He competes in the death race and kills the god judge and hands control of Las Vegas justice over to the league against gambling. Tweak tells Dread and Spikes about his homeland. Dread asks why he has told them and Tweak tells Dread that he trusts him but he has clairvoyantly seen that Spikes will soon horribly die. When Dread reaches Death Valley, Dread pays respect to the monument that pays homage to the War of Armageddon. Old mechs that were used in the war to fight the judges rise from the ground and attack them. Judge Jack cracks under the pressure and takes off his badge and his helmet and gives himself up but he is still killed. Dread and Spikes take refuge in an old fort. They hold the fort for several days but Spikes gets seriously injured and then killed in a rage of glory. Dread and Tweak both take a case of the Mega City 2 vaccine, dress Spikes up in a spare judge outfit and trick the mechs into believing that Dread is dead. Dread and Tweak have three days before the vaccines become contaminated. They have 60 miles to travel and Dread loses Tweak in a sandstorm believing him to be dead. Dread crawls to Mega City 2 hallucinating that he has been attacked by the enemies he has encountered in the Cursed Earth. He makes it to the city and they give him medical treatment. They provide the city with a cure and Dread finds that Tweak survived. Tweak requests to be sent home and Dread makes the arrangements, says goodbye to Tweak and returns to Mega City 1 as Tweak travels back to his home planet. Thank you. After travelling across the cursed earth and rescuing Mega City 2 from a deadly virus, Judge Dredd returns to Mega City 1 to a hero's welcome. Judge Dredd falls asleep in his apartment, and while he is sleeping, an imposter dressed as Dredd kills a bunch of newsmen at the Mega Times. Dredd is arrested and is sentenced to 20 years on a colony on Titan. Dredd is put on a spacecraft headed for Titan. Judge Dredd breaks from his chains and turns the ship around. He manages to escape, and Judge Cal has all of the judges searching for Dredd. He then reveals that he has control of the imposter that framed Judge Dredd in the first place. Dredd asks his informer Max Normal who could have built a robot good enough to mimic Dredd. He tells him it was probably a man named Chick Parker. Dredd confronts him but finds that Chick Parker is dead. The Dread robot attacks Dread, but with the use of an industrial magnet, Judge Dread is able to defeat it. He takes the robot's head to the chief judge to clear his name, and Dread reveals that there must be a traitor amongst them, as Dread's personal files and data were used to perfect the robot. While talking to children on the street, the chief judge is brutally stabbed multiple times by three men. When Judge Dredd arrives on the scene, the Chief Judge is still alive and hands over an SJS button to Dredd before dying. The SJS are Judge Cal's special judicial squad. They investigate crimes committed by judges 
and were the ones tasked with arresting Dredd when he was framed for murder. Realising that the SJS were responsible for the Chief Judge's murder, Dredd leaves his apartment to confront Judge Cal, but Dredd is shot in the head by Judge Quincy. When Quincy returns to Judge Cal, he has already took over as Chief Judge, and when he notices that Quincy has a missing button on his uniform, he threatens to kill him if he does not strip off. He then orders Quincy to continue performing his duties without any uniform on. While Chief Judge Cal issues new outlandish laws such as receiving the death penalty for criticising Chief Judge Cal, Dredd undergoes surgery which keeps him alive. He is dragged from his hospital bed and taken to Cal. Judge Giant steps in and convinces Chief Judge Cal to let him kill Dredd. Instead of killing Dredd, Giant helps Dredd to escape. Judge Giant and Judge Dredd escape and Judge Giant takes him to Judge Griffin, the principal of the Academy of Law. He has several injured judges that want to help. Judge Griffin asks Dredd to lead them. After civilians begin to riot against Chief Judge Cal, he creates a new law stating that civilians will be put to death if they are disobedient. This has Mega City 1 shaking in fear as they are unsure what would be considered disobedient. Dread, Giant and the rest of his judges attack and attempt to take over Broadcast Central. Dread takes over the broadcasting station and asks all civilians to fight against the madman Chief Judge Cal. Outraged at the riots that have started on the streets, Chief Judge Cal sentences Mega City 1 to death. While the rioters incapacitate a bunch of judges, Dread infiltrates an armory and gets access to a lot more weaponry. After two days of fighting, Judge Dredd and the Rebellion are close to victory, but an alien race called the Cleggs attack Judge Dredd, causing him to retreat. Chief Judge Cal broadcasts that every citizen in Mega City 1 will be put to death in alphabetical order from each sector. As the public executions begin, Judge Dredd captures Judge Slocum and threatens his life. He tells Judge Slocum that he must stop the executions and gives him instructions. Judge Slocum kills the goldfish that Chief Judge Cal appointed as his second in command. Judge Slocum tricks Chief Judge Cal into thinking that Judge Fish's death was a bad omen and convinces him to stop the executions. Chief Judge Cal has a large funeral arranged for the Judge Fish, but then becomes enraged when he sees that no civilians have showed up. Chief Judge Cal appoints the leader of Cleggs, Grampus, as his deputy Chief Judge. When everybody in Mega City 1 attempts to leave the city and move to the mutant lands, Chief Judge Cal has the judges and Cleggs force everybody back into the city, and anybody that refuses is to be killed. To prevent anybody from attempting to escape again, he forces the citizens and robots to build a huge wall around Mega City 1. Judge Dredd attempts to prevent the wall from being built, but he fails. It is built within three weeks. Angry that Dredd is still alive, Judge Grampus uses Clegg Hounds to search for Dredd. Using taste instead of smell, the Hounds of the Clegg pursue Dredd and find the Judge's hidden base. The Hounds attack Dredd. Dredd manages to kill one of the Clegg Hounds and escapes as more Clegg attack. While escaping, Chief Judge Cal commands his own hover ship called Justice One and opens fire on Dredd causing him to fly off the road. Judge Dredd's vehicle crashes and explodes, opening up a hole in the ground, which reveals an old sewage system nicknamed the Big Smiley. Judge Slocum and some other judges start to discuss turning on Chief Judge Cal, as his madness has gone too far. Unhappy that the civilians of Mega City 1 haven't celebrated Judge Dredd's death, Chief Judge Cal broadcasts that it has become illegal to be happy and that everybody must get rid of anything that brings them joy. It turned out that when Dredd's vehicle crashed, it had a safety pod which saved most of the judges and Judge Dredd. The dwellers of the Big Smalley emerge to check the pod, but they are scared off by a brute called Fergie. When Fergie attacks Judge Dredd, he refuses to kill Fergie and takes him on in hand-to-hand -hand combat. While Chief Judge Carl holds auditions for the role of Judge Dredd in a local play of which he chooses the smallest man possible, Judge Dredd has a hand-to-hand -hand fight with Fergie. 
Judge Dredd manages to beat Fergie and knocks him into the Big Smalley's sewage water. Fergie is impressed and shakes Dredd's hand and offers assistance. Fergie offers to take the remaining five judges back to his hideout. Back at Fergie's hideout, Dredd realises that all of the judges must have been hypnotised by hypnotic suggestion at the morning briefings and the five remaining judges were not affected because they did not attend. Dredd and Fergie head to the surface while Judge Giant and the other judges stay at Fergie's hideout. Judge Dredd and Fergie are spotted climbing out of the sewers by a patrol wagon. Judge Dredd keeps his badge hidden and acts like he was in pursuit of Fergie. When the judges are close enough, Judge Dredd overpowers them. Dredd and Fergie then sneak into Dredd's apartment where the Clegg have taken residence and Bollywall to the robot. Dredd and Fergie attack the Clegg. Dredd and Fergie take out the Clegg and Judge Dredd fixes Walter the robot and tells him to betray him and call the judges. Walter is hesitant at first but does what he has asked and Dredd and Fergie take out a patrol of judges before retreating back down into the sewers. Chief Judge Cal hears about Dredd's return. Walter appears before him and Cal asks for an axe because he will kill Dredd's robot if he cannot kill Dredd. Walter convinces Chief Judge Cal that he hates Dredd and Cal falls for the lies and has Walter become a judge and broadcast across Mega City 1 for three days, telling lies about Dredd and painting him as a villain. Walter breaks into a briefing room and grabs the briefing video that Dredd believes has hypnotised the judges. Judge Slocum catches Walter and takes the tape from him, but before he can tell Chief Judge Cal, Cal has him injected with a paralysis drug, which prevents him from telling Chief Judge Cal what Walter is up to. Cal then has Judge Slocum pickled in a jar and unknowingly hands the tape back over to Walter. Dredd analyses the tape and finds the proof that Chief Judge Cal was hypnotising the other judges. Dredd wants a new tape made with a new message embedded into it. Their timetable is cut short when Chief Judge Cal decides that now that the city is perfect, he will kill everybody in the city and has gas cylinders sent around the whole city. Dredd has run out of time and is forced into action. Him, Fergie and the four remaining judges head to the Hall of Justice. Judge Dredd manages to get into the briefing rooms and plays the new tape. The judges realise what they have done and rally behind Judge Dredd. Judge Grampus and the Clegg surrender, but Dredd and the judges gun them down. Chief Judge Carl manages to escape Judge Dredd and the rest of the judges. Judge Dredd and Fergie race to the top of the Statue of Justice and get overpowered by Chief Judge Carl's remaining judges. Fergie gets wounded when shot by Chief Judge Carl, but stops him from unleashing the gas by grabbing Chief Judge Carl and pulling them both over a ledge. They both plummet to their deaths. In the aftermath, Judge Dredd has memorials to Fergie placed around Mega City 1, and although people look to Judge Dredd to become Chief Judge, he appoints Judge Griffin as the new Chief Judge, and decides to remain as a street judge. Today's story is a short one, but nevertheless it introduces one of Judge Dredd's most iconic villains. The story of Judge Death begins with a criminal named Tiny the Tap evading the law. Believing that he is getting away, Judge Death emerges from the shadows. Tiny the Tap realises that from Judge Death's appearance, that he is not a normal judge. Judge Death places his hand inside Tiny the Tap's chest and kills him. Some time later, the judges find Tiny the Tap's body. They find no signs of murder but find what appears to be skin under Tiny the Tap's nails. The tech judges run tests and find that the skin cells have been dead for centuries. Hearing the sounds of a nightclub called the Rabbit Hutch, Judge Death enters and approaches the B-button jockey and again places his hand inside the man's chest and squeezes his heart causing the man to die. He then begins to massacre everybody at the Rabbit Hutch. The judges are told about the commotion and arrive to find Judge Death stood over a room full of corpses. Judge Ross hastily approaches Judge Death and is quickly killed. Judge Dredd and the other judges open fire, but Judge Death just gets back up off the floor unhurt. 
Judge Dredd continues shooting at Judge Death as he attacks the judges. As normal bullets aren't working, Judge Dredd switches to incendiary shots and sets Judge Death on fire. The charred remains of Judge Death remain motionless, and then a spiritual essence that the judges can hear and see leaves Judge Death's body and tells Judge Dredd and the other judges that they have only postponed Judge Death's attempt at judging the whole city. Judge Death's remains are taken to Sar Division, and Judge Dredd meets Judge Cassandra Anderson for the first time. She is a Sar Judge that has psychic abilities. She touches Judge Death's corpse and is telepathically used as a conduit for Judge Death to communicate with the judges. He tells them that he has travelled from his dimension to punish the guilty. When Judge Dredd asks what crime they have committed, Judge Death tells them that all crimes are committed by the living and that life itself is a crime, therefore the sentence is death. He also explains that the dimension that he has come from has been completely judged. When Judge Anderson goes home, the spectral form of Judge Death attacks Judge Anderson and possesses her. Judge Death forces Judge Anderson to steal his body from Psy Division. She tries her best to fight him mentally, but fails and she attacks anybody that attempts to stop her. She steals a H-Wagon and manages to temporarily gain control and crashes the H-Wagon. Her attempt fails and Judge Death still has control of her. At the Hall of Justice, other Psy Judges are trying to contact Judge Anderson but only receive a one-word message from her, saying, Boing. They relay the message to Judge Dredd, who understands that she is talking about the spray called Boing, that encases people in a giant ball. They get a final location for Judge Anderson, and at the low-rise, canapped building, Judge Dredd enters the room that Judge Anderson is in, and has the room tightly sealed. Judge Death is having dead fluids put into his corpse, but Judge Dredd fires at the corpse and destroys it. Judge Death's spectral form attempts to escape but cannot get out as the room is sealed. In a last attempt at escape, he takes over Judge Anderson's body again and attacks Judge Dredd. Dredd sprays Judge Anderson with Boing, which encases her and traps Judge Death inside her. Using special Boing tools, the Boing ball is transformed and placed into the Hall of Heroes. The story starts with Judge Dredd attacking a slaver settlement in the Cursed Earth. One of the slavers whips Judge Dredd around the throat and attempts to drag Judge Dredd across the ground, but Dredd uses it to his advantage and manages to yank the slaver off his horse. The slaver falls into sulphur sand and asks for help from Judge Dredd. Dredd insists that he answers his questions before he helps and asks about a child that had been taken from a settlement six months earlier. The story flashbacks to several days before, where Judge Dredd visited Judge Fay during his final hours of life. As a precog, whose visions have an 88.8% .8 accuracy of coming true, Judge Fay has visions of a war taking place in 2120. In his visions, he can see that during Mega City One's gravest hour, during the war, a man named Owen Chrysler, with the birthmark of an eagle on his forehead, will save them. Judge Fay asks Judge Dredd to find the Judge Child. After cross-referencing 47 Owen Chryslers, there is only one that they are unable to check as they moved out of the city and into the cursed earth. Judge Dredd drives across the wasteland and finds the settlement only to find that slavers had attacked the settlement. Judge Dredd finds the Judge Child's parents dead and hanging from the ropes. The story jumps back to the present where the slaver is almost fully submerged in the sulphur sands. The slaver tells Judge Dredd which slaver market the boy was sent to. Judge Dredd lets the enslaved drag the slaver out of the sulphur sands and serve him their own justice which would most likely be a hanging. Due to the unreliability of his radio whilst in the cursed earth, Judge Dredd fires off a message pod and continues searching for the boy. 
Judge Dredd drove into the slaver's market known as Neutron Flats disguised by a radiation cloak. He gets hold of the auctioneer while he is alone and questions him about the judge child. He tells Dredd that the boy was sold to the film or pharaoh months earlier. The auctioneer points out a group of men known as the Brotherhood of Trash that buy up slaves for film or pharaoh. Judge Dredd tells the auctioneer to put him up for sale. Dredd then tells his bike to wait west of town and follow Dredd at a distance of two miles. Judge Dredd is put on sale and sold to the Brotherhood of Trash. He is then taken to the town of Pharaoh, which is a huge city built into a garbage landfill. As instructed, his bike follows Dredd and dispatches anybody that is a threat or gets in its way. Judge Dredd finds that Fillmore Pharaoh is insane and obsessed with pharaohs of ancient Egypt. He had a huge monument replica of his head built. Judge Dredd is told by another slave that it gets worse, which he finds at dawn after hours of walking across the cursed earth that Fillmore Pharaoh had his slaves build grand pyramids like the pharaohs of the past. The head of Fillmore Pharaoh is placed onto a grand tomb and Pharaoh makes an appearance and talks to his slaves. He talks about his death that is likely to happen that night. Judge Dredd asks the slaves why Fillmore Pharaoh believes he is going to die that day and they tell him that someone they call Bird Boy has foreseen it. They then confirm that he has an eagle on his forehead. Dredd radios through to his bike and tells it to cause a distraction. The bike fires upon the crowds but deliberately misses its targets preventing any injuries. Judge Dredd uses the distraction to escape and get his chains broken. He then disguises himself and enters Fillmore Pharaoh's palace, disguised as one of the Brotherhood of Trash. He overhears people talking about killing the Judge Child. The Judge Child is injected with something by Brother Bunsen and falls asleep. Judge Dredd stealthily and deceptively infiltrates the area where the Judge Child is being kept. Judge Dredd tricks Brother Bunsen to leave but does not leave and injects Dredd instead with a drug that knocks him out. A funeral ceremony has been put into place to celebrate Fillmore Pharaoh's death. Judge Dredd is part of the group of men that have been selected for the sacrifice. Brother Bunsen is seen leaving with a box of loot and explains that once Fillmore Pharaoh dies, there will be chaos. Judge Dredd radios through to his bike again and tells it to save him. The bike opens fire onto the crowd again, causing the crowd to cause the slaves to take action and try to escape. Judge Dredd raises his hands and has the bike shoot at his chains. Fillmore Pharaoh gives orders to shut the coffin that will kill the Judge Child once he himself has died. He welcomes his death and taunts Judge Dredd to kill him. Dredd shoots him in the chest and stops his henchman from closing the spiked coffin that will kill the Judge Child. Judge Dredd misjudges the situation, and while he scuffles with the henchman, Fillmore Pharaoh has enough strength to close the coffin and kills the boy. Disgusted by his misjudgment, Judge Dredd holds the boy as it begins to rain. He is surprised to see the eagle mark on the boy's forehead begins to drip. He realises that the boy had been deceptively switched. A slave named Brewster tells Judge Dredd that Brother Bunsen left with a box of loot. Judge Dredd believes that the Judge Child was in that box. Judge Dredd follows the trail to Texas, and one of the Texas judges tells Dredd that the Angel family have escaped and most of the judges are searching for them. Judge Dredd uses the Justice computer to look for any new precogs that have recently started up. He finds one on the system called Brother Death. It turns out that Judge Dredd's hunch that Brother Death is actually Brother Bunsen is correct. The Angel Gang visit Brother Bunsen at Muti World and say that they want a precog to help them escape to space. To reiterate how serious they are, Mean Machine Angel turns his dial up to two, which makes him mean. He tells him to have the Judge Child ready in an hour. Brother Bunsen plans on getting the credits that are owed to him and escaping with the boy. Judge Dredd sees him so he tries to escape. The Angel Gang watch Judge Dredd chase Brother Bunsen into an attraction, 
They then have a giant mutant called The Thing from the Pit, released from its pit, and it is ordered to kill Judge Dredd. Judge Dredd climbs up the attraction's framing in pursuit of Brother Bunsen, but The Thing from the Pit is hot on his tail. It grabs Judge Dredd and he is forced to fight it. He manages to use gravity to his advantage and gets into a position that allows him to break the thing's arm. Leaving behind the wounded thing, Judge Dredd is able to get to the top of the attraction where Brother Bunsen is cornered. He shoots at Judge Dredd but Dredd avoids the shots and kicks Brother Bunsen off the ledge where he gets caught in the attraction's teeth. Judge Dredd asks where the child is and Brother Bunsen points to the Angel Gang that are getting away with the Judge Child. Without any thought, Judge Dredd dives off the ledge into a tiny pool and survives, but he is too late to catch the Angel Gang. Judge Dredd later finds that the Angel Gang hijacked a spacecraft and they are no longer on Earth. Judge Dredd gets a team of judges together and in a star cruiser heads into space to pursue the Angel Gang. The crew is made up of Judge Dredd, Judge Lauter, Judge Lopez and Judge Hershey. Judge Winslow was present, but Judge Dredd kicked him off the ship as Dredd had no need for an accountant. On the first day in space, they investigate a suspicious ship in the mineral fields just past Pluto. Judge Dredd and Judge Hershey enter the vessel, only to find a corpse at the entrance. The captain talks to them over the intercom, and Judge Dredd rushes to the control room to arrest him, only to find that he is dead. It turns out that the rig itself is the killer, and that it was replicating the voice of the captain and killed off the crew one by one because they were going to replace it with a newer model. Controlling two robots, the rig attacks Judge Dredd and Judge Hershey. Dredd frees Hershey by shooting the robot that has grabbed her. She then destroys the robot that has grabbed Judge Dredd. Judge Dredd cannot radio through to Judge Lauter as the rig has replicated Dredd's voice and tricks Judge Lauter into bringing the Star Cruiser into range of the rig's rock blaster. Judge Dredd and Judge Hershey put on spacesuits, and Dredd shoots the dust exhaust funnel, which sucks them both into space. Judge Dredd now has radio contact again and warns Judge Lauter, who manages to move the Star Cruiser out of the way of the rock blaster. The rig begs that they don't destroy it, but Judge Dredd fires upon it and destroys it. Judge Dredd then briefly visits a planet called Ombre, but finds that the natives are primitive and rules out that the Angel Gang would not have landed there. The judge's next stop is a planet called Lesser Lingo, which is in the Epsilon system. Judge Dredd and Judge Hershey are taken to the Vice President to ask them for a favour. On Lesser Lingo, the inhabitants, if wealthy enough, have their memories recorded onto a biochip which is then used to hire out bodies. The president, while using the body of a rock star, was kidnapped and his biochip was stolen. The vice president tells Judge Dredd that if they can bring the president's biochip back, he will tell them where the Oracle Spice is, which will help them to find the Judge Child. Judge Dredd questions the aliens about the biochip and they attack him. He opens fire upon them, but even though he is outnumbered, Judge Dredd manages to defeat them. One of the aliens attempts to escape via an underground tunnel, but Judge Dredd follows him down. The alien leads Dredd to the alien leader who has the biochip. He does not put up a fight and tells Judge Dredd that the aliens just wanted to force the humans into giving them the secrets of the biochip. Judge Dredd gives the Vice President the President's biochip. Sticking to his word, the Vice President tells Judge Dredd that the Oracle Spice is in the Adean system. When Judge Dredd and the Justice One crew reach the Adean system, they find a planet that has not been charted. The planet opens up and fires out tentacles that drag the Star Cruiser inside it. Trapped inside the living planet, they realise that other ships have also been caught, and the ship's blasters don't penetrate the planet's skin as it quickly heals. Judge Dredd has a nuke fired at the planet's inner lining and waits for it to heal over the nuke before detonating the nuke. The judges fly through the wound and find their way into one of the planet's veins. Judge Dredd releases depth charges which find their way into the planet's heart. They fire their way out as the depth charges destroy the planet's heart. 
The planet is dead and Judge Dredd orders them to get away from the area before anything else attacks them. They land on a planet called Agros and Judge Dredd and Judge Hershey set out to investigate. They are unaware that all races on the planet are hostile and constantly fighting wars that they broadcast. They have just finished their current war when the judges unknowingly enter the battlefield. The alien races fire at Judge Dredd and Judge Hershey. They fire back and are forced into the battle and cannot leave until the battle is over. To end the battle quickly, Judge Dredd and Judge Hershey work together to get the flag from one end of the battlefield to the other. Judge Dredd succeeds and the judges are told that the Oracle Spice is on a planet called Necros. Judge Dredd has warned that it is an evil place and that they shouldn't go there. The judges arrive at the planet Necros and are instantly attacked by a giant creature that calls itself Murd the Oppressor. Its claws rip through the hull and create monsters that attack the judges. The judges manage to set the cruiser to autopilot before they crash and then the creatures disappear. Judge Dredd fights his way towards the Oracle Spice but Murd the Oppressor encases Dredd in a bubble. While encased in the bubble, Judge Dredd is stabbed and killed. Mird the Oppressor in human sized form then brings Judge Dredd back from the dead and tells Dredd that in order to use the Oracle Spice, he must take the spice from one of the warts on his giant toad named Sagbali. Judge Dredd is dropped into the pit with only his knife. He manages to wound Sagbali and stops it from eating him. Dredd radios to his bike to illuminate the sky and the bright lights blind Sagbali and Mird the Oppressor after living in darkness for so long. In the confusion, Sagbali grabs Mird the Oppressor and Judge Dredd escapes out of the pit and grabs the Oracle Spice. Mird appears one last time warning Dredd that the Oracle Spice is dangerous and then he disappears. Judge Dredd destroys the Oracle Spice fountain and notices that Sagbali is dead. Judge Dredd gives the Oracle Spice to Judge Lopez, who has trippy and surreal visions. He sees both Murd the Oppressor and Sagbali. He screams out the weird bedlam and some other gibberish, and then falls into a coma. Judge Dredd does some research and finds that bedlam is an old name used for the planet Ab. It takes several weeks to travel there, and when the judges arrive, Judge Lopez is still in a coma. Dredd is told that an Earthling arrived on the planet weeks earlier, named Prosser. Judge Dredd believes it could be a name change. Prosser is in fact a man suffering from a rare fatal disease called Jigsaw Disease, where body parts mysteriously vanish. He attacks his doctor believing that they are deliberately keeping a cure from him. The doctor gives him tablets and he leaves. When Judge Dredd arrives soon after the doctor tells Judge Dredd, that he gave him mercy drugs that speed up the disease, meaning that Judge Dredd will have to find him quickly as the Jigsaw disease will finish him off in the next hour. Posse continues to take the pills, believing that they will cure him. It just speeds up the process as more of his body parts begin to disappear. When Judge Dredd finally catches up to Posse, Posse explains that he was the one that piloted the Angel Gang and was taking them to Xanadu. He explains that when Junior killed all of the passengers by letting them out of the airlock, Possa questioned Poor Angel about whether he would actually receive the money owed to him. Poor Angel took Possa to the judge child and told him to ask the boy. The boy began to laugh and told Possa that he would die of a horrible disease and would be unable to hold his money. Hearing this, Poor Angel sent him off the ship in an escape pod to prevent them from catching his disease. Possa then warns Judge Dredd that the Judge Child is evil and that the boy was the reason he was sent to the planet and caught the Jigsaw disease. Then Possa pops out of existence. When Judge Dredd returns to Justice One, he finds that Judge Lopez has died. Judge Dredd begins to wonder if the Judge Child is tainted by evil. The judges are awoken by a distress signal and let a galactic salesman named Rhinus Limpopop Quince onto the ship with the intention of dropping him off at the nearest habitable location. He attempts to sell the judges some of his wares but Judge Dredd declines and offends the salesman. 
The salesman attacks the judges and Judge Dredd wakes up to find that all three judges have been shrunk down and put into the salesman's bag. The salesman is approached by Justice One's robots and asked where the judges are. The salesman then becomes angry when the robots tell him that they cannot land until they receive confirmation from a judge. The judges break out of the suitcase and the robots recognise Judge Dredd so fire ten shoes. The judges manage to defeat the salesman and are returned to their normal size. The salesman on the other hand is shrunk down and stored away for judgement. The Angel Gang arrive at Xanadu and start causing trouble. The Judge Child visits Judge Dredd in a vision and doesn't tell Dredd where he is. Justice One and the judges find the crash landed spacecraft. Judge Dredd bribes the looters with bags of money for information about where the Angel Gang are. Judge Dredd manages to find a guide who was beaten within an inch of his life by the Angel Gang. They blinded both him and his horse, and since that day he has always psychically known where the Angel Gang are. The Judge Child warns the Angel family about Judge Dredd, so poor Angel and Junior move on with the Judge Child while Mean Machine and Link set up an ambush. When Judge Dredd arrives at their hideout, a bunch of townsfolk attack Judge Dredd under the orders of Paul Angel. Judge Dredd remains calm and uses his years of training to beat them all. Mean Machine and Link dress up in women's clothes in an attempt to get close to Judge Dredd, but the blind man senses them and points them out to Dredd. Judge Dredd opens fire and shoots Mean Machine in the arm, causing him to lose his one good arm. Link grabs the blind man and begins to torture him again. Mean Machine turns his dial up to 4, but Judge Dredd hits him with a metal chain causing his dial to get stuck on 4 and a half. This sends Mean Machine into a frenzy as he attempts to headbutt everything. Out of control, he grabs Link and headbutts him before charging at a petrol station and causing it to explode. The blind man tells Judge Dredd that he has enough hate in his heart to continue pursuing the remaining Angel Gang members. Poor Angel takes Junior and the Judge Child to Gromwald, which is a robot free state. They fight several robots before the Gromwalder contacts them. They ask for safety and offer the child as payment. The Gromwalder grants them entry but does not promise that it will be safe passage. Not long after Judge Dredd and the Blind Man enter Gromwald, Dredd catches a mosquito robot and speaks to the Gromwalder. He barks demands at the Gromwalder who is impressed by Judge Dredd's steely nature. He grants him passage. Judge Dredd eventually notices something in the distance and uses his rifle to look. The Judge Child provokes Junior who fears that his brothers have died and that he will be next. Poor Angel tells him not to worry, only to take a bullet from Judge Dredd's rifle. They manage to get away in their vehicle and the wounded Paw Angel asks Junior to buy him some time to get the Judge Child to Gromwald. Junior gets out and hides with a plan to ambush Judge Dredd. The blind man tells Judge Dredd that he can't go on anymore and asks to be left behind. Judge Dredd grants his wish and goes in search of the remaining Angel family. Once Judge Dredd is left, Junior reveals himself to the blind man and kills him. Junior then attempts to ambush Judge Dredd, but Dredd is one step ahead of him. The Judge Child tells Poor Angel to watch the death of his favourite son. Judge Dredd wins on a quick draw and shoots Junior several times. Junior tries to stab Dredd, but he stops him, picks up Junior and sentences him to death for all of his crimes. Judge Dredd then throws him off a bridge into the lava. Poor Angel attempts to kill Judge Dredd, but debris from a nearby volcano hits Paw Angel and knocks him off the bridge. He asks Dredd to help him but Judge Dredd sentences him to death and fires at him only to find that the Judge Child has protected him with a force field. The boy then telekinetically breaks the ledge and lets Paw Angel fall into the lava. Judge Dredd enters the palace and questions the Judge Child who admits that he murdered Paw Angel. Judge Dredd looks the boy in the eyes and decides that he is evil and unfit to ever become Chief Judge of Mega City 1. Judge Dredd leaves the Judge Child with Gromwald and heads back to Justice 1. Judge Hershey and Judge Larter are shocked that Judge Dredd left the Judge Child behind, but they still head back home. Thank you.
In Mega City 1, the Fink, accompanied by rats and a cursed earth rat named Ratty, prowls the streets at night. Using poisoned weapons, he finds one of his targets. He attacks and poisons Judge Lauter. Judge Lauter is paralysed and cannot do anything to stop the Fink. A judge finds Judge Lauter's abandoned bike and radios it in. In a secluded place, the Fink asks Ratty to get the rats to kill Judge Lauter. The rats begin to rip him apart and the judges find his remains an hour later. The Fink leaves a scrap of paper behind with Judge Lauter's body with a picture of an angel. Judge Dredd has a hunch that Fink is a member of the Angel Gang. Dredd radios through to Judge Hershey to warn her about Fink, but he is too late. Fink attacks Judge Hershey and she puts up a good fight, but eventually Fink gets the upper hand and poisons her. Fink puts Judge Hershey into a sack and is about to leave when Judge Dredd arrives. Fink manages to escape with Judge Hershey. Judge Dredd gets a call telling him that Fink is the eldest son of poor Angel and he is seeking revenge against the judges responsible for killing his family during the Judge Child mission. While Judge Hershey hangs upside down next to Fink, he thinks back to the days when he still lived with his siblings. After his mother passed away, poor Angel tried his best to make all of his sons as bad as possible. Fink was a loner and would bury himself in the dirt and avoid the rest of the Angel Gang family. He remembers the day when poor Angel thought Mean was too soft so the Angel Gang forced a surgeon to apply a robotic arm to Mean and to add the dial onto his head to make him meaner. Fink then remembers the day that he decided to leave his family behind and spent many years attacking travellers. Over the years radiation took its toll on Fink and he became much less human. Not long after meeting his companion Ratty, he found a newspaper clip that mentioned Judge Dredd, Judge Hershey and Judge Lauter being responsible for the death of his family. And that newspaper article was the reason why he was now in Mega City 1, with Judge Hershey as his captive. Fink breaks into the recycle building that recycles anybody that has passed away. He kills two of the workers and feeds them to the machine. Judge Dredd is told that Fink has been seen breaking into the recyc facility. Dredd arrives just as Fink places Judge Hershey onto the conveyor belt. Judge Dredd avoids Fink's poisoned weapons and manages to stop the recyc machine seconds before it starts to rip Judge Hershey apart. Fink hides further in the machine amongst all the gore and bodily waste. Ratty attacks Judge Dredd but Dredd manages to grab Ratty and dunk him into the waste. Fink stabs Dredd from behind and poisons him, but before he is paralysed he manages to raise Ratty out of the waste who accidentally bites Fink. As cursed earth rats are extremely poisonous, Fink should have died, but he didn't and is put in an isolation cube while Ratty makes a nest at the Recyc factory and lives comfortably. The story begins at Mega City 1's Grand Hall of Justice. A tour group is being shown Sir Judge Anderson's memorial of her encased in Boeing. The tour judge explains that she is encased in Boeing because Judge Jath is trapped within her. As the tour comes to an end, one of the men on the tour hides and remains behind as the others leave. Using Boeing laser cutters, he cuts into the Boeing encasing and attacks a judge that enters the room. The spectral form of Judge Death escapes from the encasing and enters the man's body. The man quickly escapes. Judge Dredd is called to the scene and demands that Sir Judge Anderson should be cut from the Boeing encasing as Judge Death has clearly already escaped. The man that had freed Judge Death arrives at his apartment in Billy Carter Block to find three more dark judges have killed his girlfriend even though he had done what they had asked him to do. The three dark judges are Judge Fear, Judge Mortis and Judge Fire. Judge Mortis drains the life from the man and they begin injecting dead fluids into his body. The man is ID'd by the judges so that Judge Dredd heads to his home as quickly as he can. Before Dredd can enter into the building, Judge Death is born again into his new body and creates a force field around the block preventing Judge Dredd from entering. Judge Death and the other judges then start to judge the civilians in the building. 
They start with a house party which causes a panic with other residents. A group of civilians try to escape, but end up being burnt to death by the force field. The dark judges go from apartment to apartment and slaughter all of the residents. Sir Judge Anderson arrives and tells Judge Dredd that Judge Death is not alone and has three other dark judges working with him inside the building. A bunch of civilians try to escape from the dark judges and make a last stand against them in the park. The dark judges enter and lock the park down and shrug off the shots that are fired at them. Outside, Sir Judge Anderson tells Judge Dredd that while Judge Death was inside her head, she managed to learn a thing or two like how to pass through Judge Death's force field. Holding Dredd close, she breaks through the shield and gets them in and instantly Judge Death is aware that Sir Judge Anderson is nearby. When Judge Dredd and Sir Judge Anderson enter the building, they are attacked by Judge Fire. Dredd tries to encase him with boing spray, but he burns the aerosol making it useless. Judge Dredd's bullets prove to be useless against Judge Fire, so he fires at the concrete above Judge Fire causing it to fall and pin Judge Fire to the ground under the debris. The judges quickly make their way to the generator that is controlling the shield. Anderson warns Dredd that Judge Fear is protecting the shields. Sir Judge Anderson is trapped by one of Judge Fear's man traps. Judge Fear grabs Judge Dredd and tells him to gaze into the face of Fear. Normally his gaze would kill men, but Judge Dredd fights it and tells Judge Fear to gaze into the fist of Dredd, and Dredd punches his fist straight through Judge Fear's skull. Anderson then fires incendiary rounds at Fear and burns him to a crisp. As his spirit escapes, Judge Dredd destroys the force field generator. Now that the shields are down, Judge Dredd orders that the judges attack with everything they have got. Judge Dredd finds Judge Death and Judge Mortis and opens fire on them. Accepting defeat, Judge Death and the other dark judges teleport back to their own dimension. Refusing to give up, Judge Dredd and Sir Judge Anderson find an orb on Judge Fear's corpse. Using it, the judges teleport to Dead World. They attack the dark judges, but it doesn't work. Judge Dredd's lawgiver is melted and Sir Judge Anderson struggles to deal with all of the spirits in her head until the spirits decide to channel through her body and get revenge on the dark judges. The spirits destroy the dark judges and leave them as dust and bone. Dredd and Anderson then make their way back to Mega City 1. The story starts with Malda Dreep getting a freezy whip dropped on her face from somebody in Eni Blyton block. Later that day, the Dantana block had a meeting and decided to have a block war. They vote on it and agree. When asked which block they will attack, Malda Dreep remembering the ice cream incident from earlier suggests Enid Blyton block. This is agreed upon, and when they arrive at Enid Blyton Block, they find that Enid Blyton Block had also been preparing for a block war. While the block war takes place, the other nearby blocks pick who they wish to side with. When Judge Dredd and the other judges arrive, they use riot foam on the angry crowds. They soon realise that resolving the problem won't be so simple, as other blocks join the assault and Judge Dredd realises that they will have to deal with six blocks in this block war. Due to the severity of the situation, Judge Dredd orders the judges to use stun gas on the crowds. Using stun gas in open areas is illegal but desperate measures are required. The stun gas works and starts to defuse the crowd's aggression. The nearby Pancho Villa block fire at the judges from the top of their block. Using his respirator, Judge Dredd makes his way through the stun gas and gets into a damaged pat wagon. He takes aim and destroys the Pancho Villa shooters. Judge Dredd is called to the Grand Hall of Justice. When he arrives, Chief Judge Griffin tells him that block wars have been breaking out across all of the northern sectors. Judge Dredd is told to find out what is causing the block wars. As Judge Dredd investigates the increase in block wars, he finds that the judges are also being affected. They start squabbling amongst each other and try to decide which block they will side with. The law on stun gas is lifted, but the judges begin to struggle when they start running low on riot foam and stun gas. 
Max Normal finds Judge Dredd and tells him that his block, Ricardo Montalban block, has created a toxic weapon which they plan on using to wipe out the other blocks. Judge Dredd realising that Max Normal is unaffected has him taken away to be tested on. With the information that Max Normal provided, Judge Dredd and the judges rush to the Dixie Plastine Complex where the Ricardo Montalban block plan on releasing a deadly gas. They reach it too late as the deadly gas starts billowing out of the complex. Dredd has sonic cannons fired at the complex to stop the production of the gas. To stop the gas that is already airborne, weather control create a hurricane to suck up the gas. Judge Dredd has sonic beams fired at the affected areas to disorientate the blocks that are fighting. Dredd accepts that there will be fatalities and knows that it is the best course of action. Upon investigation of Max Normal and others involved in the block mania, the judges figure out psychologically what is happening to people, but they do not know what is causing it. The situation becomes worse as block mania starts to happen in the south sectors. As the judges fight, the mania starts to creep into the western sectors. As the situation gets worse, Judge Dredd receives a bid call from somebody claiming to know who has caused the block mania. He offers to help Judge Dredd if he is offered immunity. Before the man can give any information to Judge Dredd, he is murdered by an unknown man. Dredd runs a trace on the call and identifies the man as Lorian Speck. Judge Dredd races through the warring streets in an attempt to get to the man. When he arrives, he finds Lorian Speck dead. Finding his apartment filled with water bottles, Judge Dredd realises that the water has been contaminated and radios through to control. An assassin named Orlock is caught breaking into the Atlantic Purification Plant. He kills six judges and manages to escape the plant. Orlock's description is put out to the other judges and Judge Giant finds him. Orlock shoots at Judge Giant but Judge Giant is able to disarm him. Sadly, Judge Giant is distracted and Orlock shoots him in the back and kills him. After failing to contaminate the water treatment plant, Orlock infiltrates weather control. He kills several judges before reaching his target. He contaminates the water and sets weather control to create a downpour. Judge Dredd recognises that it is Orlock's doing it instantly. A pod escapes from weather control, but Dredd tells them not to shoot it down, as they can use Orlock's antibodies to stop the block mania. Judge Dredd heads for where the pod is heading. Judge Dredd arrives before Orlock can escape. He attempts to apprehend Orlock, but he fights back. Orlock attempts to get the upper hand by throwing concentrated block mania at Judge Dredd. Dredd fights off the mania long enough to defeat Orlock. A H-Wagon arrives in time to sedate Judge Dredd as the madness takes hold. Judge Dredd wakes to find that they have made an antidote from Orlock's blood, and Judge Dredd is one of the first to use the antidote. After using truth serums, Orlock reveals that he is a judge from East Meg 1, and that they are currently aiming weapons at Mega City 1. With Mega City 1 still dealing with the Block Mania outbreaks, the Supreme Judge Joseph Bulgarin of the East Meg Judges initiates the attack on Mega City 1. The first missile to hit destroys a bunker. Now that Orlock's threat has been confirmed, Judge Dredd and the Judges prepare for the worst. Mega City 1 retaliates by sending a barrage of missiles against East Meg. Mega City 1's defences fire against the 9,000 missiles that try to destroy Mega City 1. The defence systems work as well as expected but several missiles get through and destroy several sectors. Mega City 1's missiles also destroy several sectors of East Meg but this was planned and Supreme Judge Joseph Bulgarin allows it to happen. He video calls the chief judges of Texas City and Mega City 2 and they both agree to stay out of the conflict. East Meg's next attack is detonating 10 megaton devices along the Mega City 1 eastern seaboard which creates a tsunami which destroys the Atlantic Wall. Anybody that survives the tidal wave doesn't have long left to live as a missile destroys the remaining survivors. 
Judge Dredd and Chief Judge Griffin are in an H-Wagon nearby that is damaged by the blast. The H-Wagon crashes and the Chief Judge is seriously wounded and knocked unconscious. Despite a broken arm, Judge Dredd carries the Chief Judge into the Betty boot block. They are attacked by men still affected by block mania. Dredd manages to keep the Chief Judge alive and kills the men. Dredd finds a skimmer and they manage to escape. Judge Dredd heads to a top secret location which is where command is situated during a war. A sophisticated device is used to fix Judge Dredd's broken arm. Supreme Judge Joseph Bulgrin vid calls the judges and asks for them to surrender. He tells them to check their monitors where it is revealed that more nukes are on their way. All of the southern sectors of Mega City 1 are nuked by the missiles totaling in 150 million deaths. The judges fire back with total annihilation devices which are much more destructive than nukes and would destroy East Meg 1 easily. However, East Meg expected this and divert all of their energy into a force field called the Apocalypse Warp. When all 25 TADs hit the force field, they are transported to another dimension. This dimension has peaceful inhabitants that are destroyed by the TADs. While the Apocalypse Warp is active, East Meg 1 cannot send out any broadcasts. They only have approximately 12 hours of power remaining so it is up to the War Marshal Kazan to make sure that no more TADs remain before the Apocalypse Warp comes down. War Marshal Kazan vid calls the judges and tries to threaten them, but Judge Dredd is having none of it. War Marshal Kazan sends his troops into Mega City 1 and has his men kill the judges. Tanks run through the streets crushing anything that gets in their way. Anything that survives the tanks and troops is finished off by the robotic sentinoids. Judge Dredd orders all judges to resort to guerrilla warfare. At the same time, sentinoids break into the bunker where Judge Dredd and the Chief Judge are commanding the situation. The attack is short-lived as the defence measures are fired up. Judge Dredd broadcasts to the city informing anybody that isn't too affected by block mania about the situation. Meanwhile, in Judge Dredd's apartment, Maria is heavily affected by block mania and Walter the robot has to subdue her as she is acting erratic. Using an escape ship, the Chief Judge escapes to Justice 2, blowing up the bunker as they escape. As Judge Dredd takes to the streets, somebody sabotages weather control. This causes the sky to light up with fire and then freak weather conditions begin to take place, such as snow. This leads to East Meg spraying the Block Mania antidote across Mega City 1. Not realising it is an antidote, Walter puts a dead judge's respirator over Maria's head preventing her from getting the antidote. As the invasion rages on, Judge Dredd and the judges fight as best as they can. Sadly, some civilians wander into irradiated areas which has a death sentence to them. They ask the judges for mercy so the judges mercifully kill them. War Marshal Mad Dog Kazan has hypnotic propaganda spread across Mega City 1, which further confuses civilians. Now that Kazan has control of the northern sectors of Mega City 1, Judge Dredd initiates an attack to cut off all of the northern sectors from the rest of Mega City 1. The weather changes into a heat wave, causing more problems for Dredd. While attacking, Kazan has troops attempt to sneak up and attack Dredd from behind, but luckily for Judge Dredd, Walter is nearby and spots the East Meg troopers and is able to warn Judge Dredd. Using stub guns, the judges work towards destroying the junctions and the roads connecting to the northern sectors. These stub guns are temperamental and can explode if they overheat, and that's what happens to Wilson's squad of judges. After destroying a junction, the stub gun explodes, killing Wilson and a group of judges. One of the judges named Suster dives off a ledge and uses his stub gun to destroy the remaining parts of another junction, losing his life in the process. On the lowest level of the city, the East Meg troops continue to attack, but Judge Dredd has explosive charges set up and blows the whole area, causing the streets to catch fire. The East Meg forces use phobic pulses on civilians, which disorients them and creates temporary madness and epilepsy. As the East Meg troops manage to take more and more of Mega City 1, Supreme Judge Joseph Bulgrin manages to video call War Marshal Mad Dog Kazan and gives him orders but Mad Dog Kazan does not listen and reveals that he has men in their bunker. He takes the three men including Judge Joseph Bulgarin captive and claims that he is the new Diktatorat. 
He has them killed and makes it look like they committed suicide. The East Meg troops attack Justice 2 in deep space and, and take Chief Judge Griffin captive. Mad Dog Kazan has psychosurgeons work on Chief Judge Griffin and cut out parts of his brain which makes him more cooperative. Mad Dog Kazan uses Chief Judge Griffin to spread more propaganda by broadcasting Chief Judge Griffin telling citizens the invading East Meg are actually friends. Judge Dredd decides that the only thing to do is kill Chief Judge Griffin. Judge Dredd kills some East Meg judges and disguises himself in one of their outfits. Using secret passageways, he breaks into the Hall of Justice and takes out any judges that get in his way. When Judge Dredd finally reaches Chief Judge Griffin, Judge Dredd asks if he has betrayed Mega City 1. This causes Chief Judge Griffin to realise that he is being manipulated. He tells Mega City 1 that he is sorry and that he deserves to die. Judge Dredd shoots him and then when they try to take Dredd, he shoots himself in the heart. Seeing Judge Dredd's death broadcasted, Walter the Robot gets angry and plans on getting revenge. Maria, who is the only person in Mega City 1 that is still suffering from block mania, also agrees to fight. As East Meg judges remove Judge Dredd's body, they realise that he is still alive. Judge Dredd kills them and attempts to escape. It is revealed that Judge Dredd had judged Teeper just a bullet that would only be powerful enough to break enough of his badge and one inch of flesh. The bullet actually goes in further than it should have and almost punctures his heart. Dredd puts up a fight as the Hall of Justice catches fire. Judge Dredd almost dies but using the secret passageway Walter the Robot finds Dredd and gives him his helmet back which Walter found on his way to Dredd. Maria, still suffering from block mania, wants to fight but Dredd knocks her out and they escape. They administer the block mania cure to Maria and Dredd has the bullet removed. On the 8th day, on a vid call, Judge Dredd asks Texas City and Mega City 2 for help, but they decline. Judge Dredd asks for 7 judges to assist him, including Judge Hershey. Sir si Judge Anderson psionically picks up on Judge Dredd's plans and assists him on bringing their total up to 9. They plan on wiping out East Meg 1. Judge Dredd and his squad take over a Stratus V and fly to East Meg 1. Using the Strato V, Dredd fires a nuke into a bunker and has the Strato V play a pre-recorded message. The East Meg judges blow the Strato V up, not realising that Judge Dredd and the other judges have already exited the vehicle and cutting their way into the bunker. The men in the bunker are too late to realise what is happening as Judge Dredd and the judges make their presence known. Judge Dredd and his team make their way further into the silo, killing anybody that gets in their way. When they reach the control room, the men refuse to hand over the launch code, so Sir Judge Anderson reads his mind. The man begs that they do not destroy East Meg 1, but Judge Dredd denies the request as half of his city is burning, and he launches the missiles. East Meg 1 is completely destroyed. Judge Dredd has a message sent to Mad Dog Kazan, who then has Judge Dredd and his judges arrested and brought back to him in Mega City 1. Mad Dog Kazan personally blames Isaacs for their failings and tells Isaacs that every day at the same time he is to play Russian Roulette until the day he is unlucky enough to get the bullet. Knowing that East Meg 1 is destroyed, the Mega City 1 judges fire back harder and start to regain territory. Judge Dredd and his judges are not killed by Mad Dog Kazan as he has them tortured instead. Judge Magruder is the only remaining Council of Five member alive and she has more stub guns built which helps the judges to take back their city. One more day passes and Mad Dog Kazan forces Isaacs to play Russian Roulette again. Isaacs has had enough and decides to free Judge Dredd and his team of judges. Isaacs walks Judge Dredd past the other East Megas and leads him to Mad Dog Kazan. Mad Dog Kazan tries to put up a fight but Judge Dredd kills him. As he dies, he says that he regrets nothing. Over the following day, Judge Magruder is sworn in as the new chief judge. As the holding cells fill up to maximum capacity, the judges are left with no choice but to send the East Megas back to East Meg 1. They are deported and left in the rubble of their destroyed city. Thank you. In ISO Block 666, Judge Ward and Sobrani randomly decides to release all of the prisoners. One of the prisoners held in ISO Block 666 is Fink Angel. 
Judge Dredd and the judges get the situation under control. Judge Dredd asks Judge Warden Sobrani why he let the prisoners go, and he tells him that he had an overwhelming urge. On planet Xanadu, the Judge Child is pleased with his work so far, as his plan was to make sure Fink Angel escaped. Fink begins to work on his poisons, and makes himself some poison darts. On planet Xanadu, the Judge Child approaches Mean Machine Angel's grave and pours Regeneration Elixir over his corpse. Mean Machine Angel climbs out of his grave and is told by the Judge Child that Judge Dredd murdered the rest of his family and that Fink is waiting for him in Mega City 1. Mean Machine starts making his journey to Earth when Judge Dredd is told that Fink Angel escaped during the prison riot and he has control warned Judge Hershey as she was kidnapped by Fink last time he attacked the judges. Judge Dredd visits the Recyc facility where he believes Fink's companion Ratty has been living. Judge Dredd's suspicion is confirmed when somebody finds some of Fink's victims. Fink is found shouting for Ratty and Ratty recognises Fink's voice instantly. Ratty comes to Fink's aid and kills the Recyc security that are attacking Fink. Judge Dredd follows an injured Fink into the tunnels, but the Judge Child psychically makes security open a valve causing Judge Dredd to be swept through the tunnels, allowing Fink to escape. Judge Dredd soon becomes suspicious when he asks why the valve was opened and he is told that they had an overwhelming urge. One week later, Mean Machine takes over the shuttle that has brought him back to Earth and crash guides it to Mega City 1 where it crashes. Judge Hershey vid calls Judge Dredd and tells him about the crash shuttle and that the survivors say it was Mean Machine. Judge Dredd finds it difficult to believe Mean Machine is still alive and visits Psy Division where his suspicions that the Judge Child is responsible is confirmed. The Judge Child psychically guides Mean Machine to his brother. When Mean Machine searches Sector 77 for Fink, he is poisoned by Fink's poison darts. Fink drags Mean Machine down into his lair and hangs him upside down. When Mean Machine wakes up, Fink questions him as he believed Mean Machine was dead. Judge Dredd convinces the Chief Judge to allow robots to be sent to the Judge Child. The Judge Child senses this and begins to panic as this is not a part of his vision. Mean Machine breaks into Judge Dredd's apartment and threaten Maria and Walter. When Walter the robot tries to threaten Mean Machine, he headbutts Walter and smashes him to pieces. Believing that Maria is Judge Dredd's wife, they vid call Judge Dredd and threaten him. He calls for judges to get to his apartment but Fink and Mean Machine have escaped before they arrive. The Judge Child psionically yells at them for messing things up and warns them that Maria is not Judge Dredd's wife, but they do not listen. Regardless, the Judge Child makes somebody crash their moped, creating an explosion and killing several judges, and allowing the Angel Brothers to escape. Back at Fink's lair, they have Ratty take a note to Judge Dredd. Upon receiving the note from Ratty telling Judge Dredd to follow Ratty alone, Judge Dredd is led into an ambush where Fink hits Judge Dredd with a poison dart. They hang Judge Dredd upside down and Fink explains all of the ways that they could kill Dredd and settle on building a torture machine. Fink begins work on the torture machine and Dredd starts to provoke Mean Machine by saying a real man could take Judge Dredd out with the dial only cranked up to 2. Mean Machine gets angry, cranks his dial to 2 and headbutts Judge Dredd. His helmet takes most of the hit and his restraints break freeing Judge Dredd. Judge Dredd reveals that he took an anti-paralyzing serum before searching for the Angel Brothers, as he knew Fink would use paralyzing poison. Judge Dredd is attacked by Fink, Mean Machine and Ratty. Fink throws deadly poison darts at Dredd, but Judge Dredd uses Ratty as a shield killing Ratty in the process. Mean Machine cranks his dial up to 4, but Judge Dredd manages to get the upper hand and knock him out. Fink tries to bite Dredd but he manages to throw Fink into the torture machine that Fink was building. Fink is ripped apart and dies. When the other judges arrive, Mean Machine is arrested and Maria yells that she will never work for Judge Dredd again. The Judge Child cannot understand why his vision did not come true. The robots from Mega City 1 soon arrive and fire missiles at the Judge Child. Grunwalder locks the Judge Child out of his city. The missile hits and completely demolishes the Judge Child. Thanks. 
Judge Dredd pays Mean Machine Angel a visit in his ISO cube after Mean Machine had undergone brain surgery. The judges altered Mean Machine's brain to think that Judge Dredd is now poor Angel. Judge Dredd convinces Mean Machine to help show him the Radlands to find a hover freighter that was shot down by mutant scavengers. Mean Machine thinks that they will be stealing the Liberace's treasure that was in the hover freighter. The real reason that Judge Dredd needs to find the hover freighter is because it contained Judge clones that were being gifted to Texas City. The reason that these clones are so important is because they are clones of the legendary judges Fargo, Goodman, Hansor, Rubens and Mandala and would be very bad if they fell into the wrong hands. Judge Dredd and Mean Machine find the hover freighter but find that it has already been looted. Mean Machine takes Judge Dredd to a nearby town called Oxter. Mean Machine gets angry when a man asks him why he is with the judge. Mean Machine still doesn't realise that Judge Dredd is not actually his father. Mean Machine is called out by three brothers called the Goat Boys. Mean Machine goes out, turns his dial up to four and charges head first at them. He hits them so hard that one of the brothers skulls is cracked open and is shattered across the floor. With one Goat Brother dead, the other two brothers continue to fight Mean Machine. As he takes them out, Mean Machine starts headbutting one of the brothers into the ground. Judge Dredd recognises that Mean Machine's dial has got stuck at four and a half which sends Mean Machine into a rage. He begins charging at the town members. Judge Dredd manages to turn down Mean Machine's dial but the water tower that they are stood under has already been damaged. Judge Dredd and Mean Machine are swept away by the flooding water but when they manage to get back on their feet, Mean Machine's brain surgery slightly fades and he sees Judge Dredd as himself. So Mean Machine attacks him. Judge Dredd manages to calm Mean Machine down and convinces him that he is actually poor Angel. Judge Dredd was aware that the brain surgery would wear off but it is wearing off sooner than he had thought. Aware that he is running out of time, Mean Machine tells Dredd that the mutant scavengers would have headed north. Judge Dredd and Mean Machine have to use rad cloaks to travel through a radioactive dust storm. The storm reveals that one of the robotic midwives carrying one of the Judge clones had been buried and that the clone hadn't survived. Judge Dredd ceremonially cremates the baby to prevent any wild creatures ravaging it. At the Tulsa Malts, the leader of the mutant scavengers named Ugly John points out that they have Judge clones and that they will be able to hold Mega City 1 at ransom with them. Judge Dredd and Meme Machine finally arrive at the Tulsa Malts, which is a city in Oklahoma which was made out of glassine, but melted when nuclear bombs hit it, burying the population in melted glass. As they arrive, they find a mutant with a ransom note for the Judge clones. They are attacked when entering the hideout so Judge Dredd fires off some flares. Due to the reflective surfaces of the terrain, it blinds the mutants. One of the mutants accidentally blows up their ammunition dump, which causes an explosion and melts the glassine again. Judge Dredd finds the remaining midwife robots and tells them to escape. The melting burning glassine pours through and kills off the mutants as Judge Dredd and Mean Machine rush for the exit. Ugly John is burnt to death as Glassine pours down around him. As Judge Dredd and Mean Machine escape alive, Mean Machine's brain surgery completely wears off and he attacks Dredd. At first, after feeling like he owes Mean Machine for his help getting across the Radlands, Judge Dredd refrains from using his lawgiver. But with Mean Machine's dial cranked up to four, Judge Dredd and Mean Machine deal out quite a beating to each other. Judge Dredd ends up with several cropped ribs and takes Mean Machine down by shooting him in both kneecaps with his lawgiver. The Texas City judges arrive soon after and arrest Mean Machine and collect the four remaining Judge clones. Thank you for Judge Dredd is shown the Proteus machine, which is a time machine. Up until now they were unable to pinpoint a specific time and date to send people to. As the machine can only send two people through the machine, both Judge Dredd and Sir Judge Anderson are chosen as they were previously involved in the Judge Child case. Before the precog Judge Fay died, he foresaw an apocalyptic event taking place in 2120, which only the Judge Child could stop. Now that the Judge Child is dead, the judges need more information on what to expect from this future event. There is no guarantee that Judge Dredd and Sir Judge Anderson will be able to return, but they agree anyway. 
They enter the Proteus machine and travel through time to April 2120. They find that the streets are filled with corpses and decay. Sir Judge Anderson attempts to get a reading on the cause of everything. Judge Dredd suspects that it's Judge Death's doing it first, but Sir Judge Anderson tells him that it's something worse, but she is unable to get a clear picture. A man spots the two judges and jumps into an acid pool claiming that he wants to die clean. Judge Dredd and Sir Judge Anderson soon find out why the man killed himself when they visit a nearby sector house and find that the judges have become vampires. As they sneak through the sector house undetected, they find civilians caged up and others being fed on. When they enter the control room, they find that the last entry was made in January, but before they can see what that last entry was, a vampiric Judge Hershey enters the room and stops them. She attempts to bite Dredd and other vampire judges attack Sir Judge Anderson. They both execute Hershey and the judges. As they escape with the data log, they free the captives and burn down the sector house. They get to somewhere safe and check the vid logs where a six armed mutant claims to be getting revenge for something that it doesn't specify. The mutant melts the brains of the Sar judges including Anderson as they attempt to stop it and then the mutant infects the judges with vampirism. Judge Dredd decides that they must stay and find out how to defeat the mutant before attempting to travel back to their normal time. As they go in search of the mutants, Sir Judge Anderson is attacked by a snake-like creature and working together the two judges manage to kill it. They continue on ignoring the creatures that are roaming the streets and killing civilians. They are eventually stopped by some survivors. Sir Judge Anderson feels sorry for them and gives them some of her rations. They tell the judges what little they know and they warn the judges that anybody that has entered the dark never returns. When the two judges enter the dark, the survivors cheer them on. They become surrounded by wraiths that ignore the judges. Judge Dredd asks Sir Judge Anderson why she is crying, and she explains that she can feel all of the painful emotions of all of the wraiths. They are attacked by more mutants, and during the fight, Judge Dredd is seriously injured, and gets his eyes ripped out of their sockets, rendering Judge Dredd completely blind. Sir Judge Anderson saves him, but as they get away, the ground begins to melt into a swirling liquid, and Sir Judge Anderson is swept away. Alone and blind, Judge Dredd is psychically contacted by the mutant. The mutant implies that they have met before, and that he wants Judge Dredd to suffer. He tells Judge Dredd to follow the heat of the fire, and disappears. Dredd blindly fights past all of the creatures that he can't see. Eventually he ends up crawling, and out of amusement the mutant makes everything disappear and Judge Dredd finds himself on the floor. The mutant reveals that after Judge Dredd had killed the Judge Child, using his DNA, Gromwalder cloned the Judge Child, but something went wrong and he mutated. The mutant has Judge Dredd come face to face with a zombie version of Judge Dredd from the future. For even more amusement, the mutant wants them to fight, and when Judge Dredd asks about his eyes, the mutant tells him that Sir Judge Anderson can be his eyes and teleports him to her. Anderson apologises to Dredd as after she was swept away, she was too scared to re-enter the dark. Judge Dredd understands and they are attacked by the zombie Dredd. Sir Judge Anderson shoots him, but it doesn't stop him, and he blows up Sir Judge Anderson's bike when they try to leave. The two judges survive the explosion and Sir Judge Anderson gives directions telling Judge Dredd where to shoot in order to hit Zombie Dredd. Judge Dredd carries Sir Judge Anderson as she has a wounded leg and she acts as his eyes. Recognising the area, they head for a sector house where they are attacked by more Judge Vampires. They are easily outnumbered and Judge Dredd threatens them and bluffs them which works. They find a more sophisticated time machine which Judge Dredd had hoped for. While Sir Judge Anderson figures out how to set the time machine, Judge Dredd struggles to fight off Zombie Dredd. All three end up inside the time machine when it is activated, and the mutant loses control over Zombie Dredd and it dies. The two judges return through the Proteus time machine, just minutes after they had left at the beginning of the mission. Judge Dredd asks that they travel to Xanadu once again and destroy the mutant before it becomes too powerful. Judge Dredd is operated on and given new bionic eyes. One week later they set out for Xanadu and arrive as the accident that created the mutant happens. 
the mutant puts up a fight but Judge Dredd kills it and chucks it into lava to make sure it is completely destroyed. Judge Dredd also kills Grumwalder as he could no longer be trusted. When they return home the Precogs no longer have visions of a dark future but one mystery remains. Sergeant Anderson asks that if they prevented the future from happening, why does Zombie Dread still exist and why has Judge Dread still lost his eyes? Thank you for watching and if you liked the video please like and subscribe and I will see you at the next video.